This and that and what a fuck else, episode 116. In this one, I'll be talking about quite an interesting immigration story and then something about Putin. I've got some images for you from Russia and there is some information from the UK that doesn't paint a pretty picture. And a what a fuck that's gonna make your jaw drop. In any case, it was a weird day in the Donbass and in Ukraine. Uh, Putin has called for a ceasefire across the whole front in order to allow the soldiers and the civilians in the area to celebrate the Orthodox Christmas. And obviously, it did not go well, down well, with the Zotsis and the West in general. I find it disgusting the way the people reacted. This was a goodwill gesture. Common decency and respect should have dictated the actions and the words from the West. But I've spoken about it previously. The West is so totally committed to supporting the Zotsis in the Ukraine. They are like gambling addicts. They keep on doubling up. And with every spin, they lose and they double up. And we all know how that works out. In the end, they're going to lose everything. I have listened to some analysts that are talking about this. There are people that don't even want to consider the possibility of Russia winning that war there. And I feel sorry for them. There are analysts that are of the opinion that if Russia should win convincingly in the Ukraine, NATO is done. What should be more troubling for the Europeans is the fact that they are being disarmed at a hell of a rate. I see Denmark, I think it is Denmark that has now sent 10,000 rounds of ammunition, 155 mil ammunition, to the Ukraine. <laughs> and as the uh, reporter of that so aptly noted, that would last two days in the Ukraine. Two days, and it's gone. And I believe they're trying to fire up an old ammo, ammo factory in Moldova to make 152 millimeter ammunition. Good luck with that one. How long is it going to take to get that factory started? And at what rate can it produce? Not close to the rate that it is consumed. And I see the Germans is giving some fancy vehicles. And here comes the kicker. The damn thing used specific, specific custom ammunition that is manufactured by Germany and uh, I think Sweden. So, things are not looking too good for the collective West on war front. They may be winning on the propaganda front, but that's it. In any case, let's go. And let's start off with this photograph. It's a black and white shot. This would typically be entered in a competition in the boudoir section. And I like the shot. I like the pose and there's a lot of poise in this shot. And the lighting is very good. So for me, this is a winner. And I think it will get a good solid 8 from me. Now, let's move to that immigration story now. It was a long story and I'm not going to read the whole thing. But what happened here is that this guy was is a South African and he was in the Ukraine. Uh, I think he arrived two days before the Russians moved into Ukraine. And he found himself there and he realized he's got to get out of there. And he and a friend that he met there went through hell to get out of the U. And they 
They traveled by taxi and I don't know by what, and eventually they were on foot. So it was quite an ordeal for the poor guy. So he got out of the Ukraine and Johan Nell has found happiness and the love of his life in Russia after escaping from Ukraine in February last year. Ten months after walking for 16 hours and hustling for rides to escape from Ukraine when Russia launched its attack, Johan Nell said he faced trauma following the experience. However, the online teacher is now living in Russia where he made new friends and found the love of his life. <laughs> and I like this, like a good, a good news story. And then there's some statistics about the refugees. The number of Ukrainian refugees who arrived in Europe exceeds 7.9 million people. The most amount of refugees accepted by one country is Russia, with more than 2.8 million people. This is from the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. This is something that the Western press don't mention much. The number of people that actually fled to Russia. And this was interesting. I got involved in a bit of a skirmish on a group because the people were... They thought I was from Hungary. <laughs> I'm either Hung Hungarian or, a, or from Poland. I don't know how the fuck they came to that conclusion. But in any case, and then after the confusion was resolved, somebody posted this for me. Now what I'm going to read to you is a pamphlet that was distributed after the Ukraine Nazi battalion Nachtigall entered Lvov on June 30, 1941. Hey people of Ukraine, they were with you. You saw them working, fighting and dying heroically. Today this struggle continues under the guidance of their and their leader Stefan Bandera. He is the fighter of the Ukrainian National Revolution, the member of OUN, the fighter of UPA. Ukrainian people, we worked from the underground before. We prepared by repulsing attacks of the enemy which wanted to destroy us and you. The USSR, the Moscow prison of nations, is falling. People know this. Moscow, Poland, the Hungarians, the Jews, these are your enemies. Destroy them. Know your leadership is the providence of the Ukrainian nationalists. This is the OUN. Your leader is Stepan Bandera. Glory to Ukraine, glory to heroes, glory to leaders. Later, Ukrainian Nazis genocided 130,000 Poles in Volin in 1943. And this is something that bothers me. I don't know why the current Pol Polish government is so in love with those guys in Kiev. History tells you that the Zotsis from the western part of Ukraine don't like Poles. And then I saw this and I just laughed. Vladimir Putin, threatening the world and claiming to have the most high-tech military next to his fax machine and two landlines. Now, obviously what this idiot that posted this do not understand. Putin never carries a cell phone. And very few of the top Russians actually carry cell phones around. They work with landlines because landlines cannot be disturbed like electronic signals. Plus landlines is much more secure. And uh, that is what the poster do not understand. You must look when you see images of many of the officers in the Kremlin. You'll see the rows of telephones there. These guys are still using landlines and they're using it for a specific reason. And then we come to this South African idiot. Malema's 2023 command. 
Fighters must not take any employment from a white or Indian person. The EFF will give you money. You must obey Malema. What the hell is that? Any case, this oak, I don't know. If I start talking about him, I will land in trouble. And then I want to share these with you. The main Christmas tree of St. Petersburg at the Palace Square. Now I'm going to show you some images. Take a look at this image. Look how clean it is there. Look at that. And look at this. I mean, it is clean and well kept and the buildings are in good condition and well maintained. It's quite obvious. And look at this. And now mentally try and compare this to what happened in France, in Paris, over that Christmas. And if you can show me images of other European cities that are clean and orderly like this, please put for me a link here in the description at the bottom. And then we have this. You look at that image, that girl is cold. Frost in Russia because it's winter. And why the crisis in Europe? Has the almighty Putin created a crisis? In some regions of Russia, frosts are predicted from 15 to 53. Le Pen announced the closure of hundreds of businesses in France due to the rising energy prices. Sunak intends to allow companies to fire strikers against the backdrop of the crisis, writes the Times. Guys, everything I pick up and read of the European economy is a disaster. And what you have to think about, and just keep in mind, all of that horror in the European economy and now in the social lives, all of that self-inflicted. They started that sanction war against Russia and that's where it went wrong. And today the European economy is in, sh like Ursula says, it is in tatters, in tatters I tell you. The UK economy is in tatters. I don't know. I cannot understand how intelligent people has allowed this to happen. And then we get this. The effect of EU sanctions on Russia less than zero. The EU sanctions on Russia over the Ukraine conflict have been a complete failure. Belgian member of the European Parliament, Guy Verhofstadt, said. He added that the EU was only rewarding Russia by increasing imports from the country. But common sense has left the room. Writing on Twitter for Hofstad, who served as a Belgian Prime Minister from 1999 to 2008, has been an MP since 2009, claimed that the effect of the EU's nine packages of sanctions on Moscow is less than zero. The former PM said that in the bloc's attempt to punish Russia, it has achieved the opposite result. We are rewarding Russia for its war against us. And nobody will listen to this. And then we get to the UK. Listen to this. The UK to label Iran's elite un unit terror group. Britain will officially designate Iran's elite Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps as a terrorist group within weeks. Home Secretary Sela Breiberman and Secretary Minister, Security Minister Tom Tugan had support the move, according to the newspaper. Officials have been building the case against the IRGC, with the security services understood to have shared intelligence. Now I'm asking myself the following. What the fuck does the British think they're going to achieve by labeling this unit as a terrorist group? Second, who the hell is the British 
to label that Iranian group as a terrorist group while the British is directly involved in actually terrorizing the people of Yemen. The British fleet is blocking the ships that want to deliver food and medicine to Yemen, but they can label the Iranian security group as terrorists. Who is the fucking terrorist? And then we get this. The UK to suffer more than most this year from the Financial Times. Britain faces one of the worst recessions among the world's leading industrialized nations this year. The Financial Times is reported, citing economists. In an annual poll of 101 of 101 leading UK-based economists, the majority told the outlet that the fallout from the spiraling inflation triggered by the pandemic and the Ukraine conflict will persist for longer in the UK than in other G7 nations, and the country's recovery will be one of the weakest. GDP will shrink for most of 2023. The government will have to run a tight fiscal policy and the Bank of England will keep interest rates high, the report said. John Philpott, an independent labor market economist, told Financial Times that the 2023 recession will feel much worse than the economic impact of the pandemic. Other respondents described the outlook for consumers, especially those on low incomes, as tough, bleak, grim, miserable and terrible. Now, one thing is for sure, the UK is in deep shit. And I don't know how they're going to get out of it. Because that governor, Sunak, yes, I call him a governor because he was appointed by Schwab, WEF governor. England is UK is a colony of the WEF. And they are printing money as if there's no tomorrow, which is contributing to the inflation. And then they, they print the money and they penalize the consumers with high interest rates. They give millions and millions of pounds to the Ukraine instead of looking after their own people. I don't know how this is going to work out for and there's more from the UK. The UK is going down this year as Financial Times reported Britain look, looking down shotgun barrel, facing one of the worst recessions among leading industrialized nations, with a gross domestic product set to spiral down for most of 2023, as dark clouds already hover over the island nation. Is the UK PM Rishi Sunak ready for a tumultuous year or is it time for a new PM? And as I said, you don't have PM there. This is an appointed governor in any case. I don't know how England is going to get out of this shit. And then more from the UK. Rishi Sunak strike law to let bosses sack workers and sue unions. Sunak intends to give employers the right to fire striking workers and sue unions. Workers in six industries, health, railroad, education, fire and border security, could be fired if their strike, due to low wages or harsh working conditions, create a shortage in providing a minimum level of public service. So, what is this? I don't know how this is going to go down. Because those, as far as I know, those industries that he's named there, if they're going to go on a dead strike, Britain is finished. But this Prime Minister thinks he's tough. Let's see where he gets. And then we get to that what a fuck moment. <laughs> There's no words for this. Just look at that image. Imagine you're a dentist and this guy drops into your seat. What the hell will you do? And here where I sit, looking at that image, all I can say is, what the fuck is that? I can't believe it, but there it is. That, that, how can I say, bony note 
please give me a like and a subscribe and share the thing and especially if you are a Twitter user as well share it to Twitter please thank you have a great day